I uncovered a pattern that all movies follow, with no exceptions. This video will break down the unbearable weight of massive talents, according to Hollywood's storytelling secrets. Check out the videos tab to see if your favorite movie has been exposed. We start as always with a focus on our protagonist, specifically their personality, their inner conflict, and their situation. Maria fangirls over Nick Cage the Hollywood legend, then gets kidnapped, while Nick Cage the actor desperately pitches himself for a perfect role, and he's haunted by the specter of his younger eccentric self. Next, we examine where, why, and how our protagonist exists in their world, with a focus on why they don't quite fit in. Nick suffers the waning love of even his diehard fans, while his family is invisible to his own career and passion. Fink the agent leads him casually into a painful situation, then pitches the birthday party invitation, and reminds him of his high and rising debts. Then a brief event happens, one that's never happened before. It's destined to lead all the characters away from their status quo. Nick does not get the role, and the bad news tips him over the edge. Which leads us to examine the effect of that something new to the status quo, specifically what's different now and what remains the same. Nick makes a drunken spectacle at his daughter's party, and reveals just how stuck in the past he is with himself and his family. Then Olivia pleads for Nick to mature, to grow up like them. We move along to the discovery that things are less than ideal, or else we explore how badly things are. Both scenarios are common. Nick is locked out of his room, marking the end of his credit, and in his lowest moment, he accepts the party invite and retires. We learn about the political maneuvering that's behind the opening kidnap, then Nick is pulled into a CI operation by Vivian. Next, our characters dedicate their effort to a specified goal, and this is always narrower in scope than what the third act will demand. Nick scrambles for a handle on the situation and what he's supposed to do, while Javi frets about asking a Hollywood legend to read a screenplay. Then we run through a brief checklist of the main story elements that we can expect during this journey. The dynamic bromance between Nick and Javi, Javi's screenwriter ambitions, the presence and influence of Lucas, and of course, echoes of a legendary career upon retirement. Which brings us to the brief event that launches our characters into the wild jungle of the second act. It's also called the Oh Shit Moment. In a show of a self-destructive direction, Nick flirts with drowning until Javi dives in and saves him. Oh, shit. We follow our characters as they discover the new rules and expectations of their journey. These are always distinct to the narrative at play. Gabriella enforces Javi's whim, forcing Nick to play along with his host. Then Javi explains the magic and happiness that Nick's movies bring to the world and convinces him to trust him as they embrace his old roles. Next, our characters showcase their ability to grow and progress, and this is typically an external or physical beat rather than internal or emotional. Post-adrenaline, Nick opens up and is vulnerable about his life. Then the pair share a heated passion for all things cinema, and Nick agrees to read the screenplay, officially unretiring. Then our characters face legitimate and understandable reasons to deviate from their stated convictions, agendas, or desires. The ghost of Nick Cage past sabotages Nick's mature career moves. Then Vivian reveals the hobby connection to the kidnapped girl in the news. We endure the anxiety as our characters face an escalation of problems and complications. Vivian recruits Nick into the CI operation by guilting him over his daughter, and he agrees to search the mansion on their behalf. A henchman investigates a strange light in a doorway above him, while Nick struggles with spy technology as a civilian. Then he's locked out of the room, away from the antidote. Next, our characters evolve internally or emotionally and they do this by using elements of the plot or story, which they've gathered and learned so far. 
Vivian guides Nick through his own escape and rescue, and yells out action to spur the trained actor into saving himself, and once again leverages his guilt over his daughter against him. Then our journey-weary characters come to terms with their ongoing struggles. Moments and elements of the first act are used to gauge their progress. Javi talks about his father issues, which mirror Nick's Act 1 daughter issues. Then we continue our Act 1 running joke of referencing every Nick Cage movie, and Javi wins Nick back over with his Act 1 passion for movies which results in a brief event that strikes at our protagonist's core conflict. Nick offers to write a screenplay with Javi, manipulating his new friend to investigate the kidnapping. And there's no turning back from here. We receive needed answers alongside our characters, which relate to both their external journeys and their internal conflicts. Vivian pushes the operation forward and provides a tangible location to check out. While Nick and Javi discuss filmmaking tropes in the most meta way possible. Next, our characters complete their narrow scope objective, yet discover that their victory is shallow or altogether meaningless and must complete a wider scope objective. Nick and Javi fear and loathing their way into vibing on the same wavelength, but their cinema obsession won't help Nick mature. The pair have the revelation to make themselves the stars but they still have to write it, and time for the kidnapped girl is ticking. Then our characters face an existential conflict that wounds their sense of self and identity or their physical journey. Despite his bond with Javi, Nick takes his opportunity to sniff out a location, but Javi wakes up and catches him in the act. Yet the intel was a false lead because it was a Nick Cage shrine instead. We celebrate with our protagonist in light of an undeniable win, which is always related to the rebirth in some way. Nick praises the screenplay, comparing himself to the greats. Then Vivian manipulates the actor's ego to keep him compliant, and Javi correctly diagnoses Nick's ultimate problem. His creative slump is weighed down by the past. Next, our characters suffer a grand loss, and this is always connected to their newfound inability to quit their journey. Vivian reveals that the operation is compromised, and Nick is in danger, but Javi has the family flown in and worsens their dysfunction. Then we experience a thematic freefall, as the main story elements are ramped up and thrown into upheaval. Nick is Nick-centric in his ego-soothing apology, while he digs deep again into better memories from the past. Addie confesses to the childhood trauma that she's endured because of his antics. Then Lucas reveals his connection to the political maneuverings, which forces us into a brief event that robs our protagonist of seemingly any hope of success. Vivian gives Nick the go-ahead to kill Javi first, or else be killed by his new best friend first. We watch our characters realize that they cannot return to their first act selves, and they turn to face the wider scope objective. Nick confesses everything to Olivia, but there's no reason to believe him, while Lucas turns Javi against his new best friend, or risk being killed with him. Then they share an adorable moment that perfectly encapsulates their oddball bromance, and the truth comes out during their standoff that Javi is only a pawn. Next, our characters use the major swings of the story and their personal journeys to move towards the climax. The pair team up and escape yet another threat, but this one is not hallucinated, and Addie's kidnapping is reported to Nick. Vivian saves Nick's life from a bad guy henchman, then Nicky discourages the heroics that mature Nick is planning while everyone pulls together their resources for the role of a lifetime. Then the final confrontation plays out between our protagonist and characters against the antagonistic force. Nick and Olivia infiltrate Lucas's compound in disguise and in character. Then Olivia manages to help the kidnapped girls escape while Nick and Javi take down the guards and escape behind their loved ones which culminates in a brief moment where our protagonist finally, and oftentimes metaphorically, 
overcomes their place in the Act 1 status quo. Nick saves his family, becoming one with his legendary movie status and his badass Papa Bear status. We experience the direct aftermath of the climax. This can give our characters a moment to reflect on the situation, or else wind down the action with a coda. Javi and Gabriella try to sacrifice themselves to keep the girls in the cages alive. Then a thrilling car chase ends when Addie teams up with her father for the ultimate win. Next, we touch base with additional characters, typically to contrast them against the new status quo. The screenplay is revealed to be a celebrated hit, and hey, Fink was there too. Then Javi unites with Nick before running off to do promotions. Then we conclude with a tight focus on our protagonists, specifically to contrast them against how we met them at the opening. Nick chooses family time over the prestige of his career, and even lets Addie choose a movie, measuring his growth as a grown-up. And there you have it. The unbearable weight of massive talent fits perfectly into Hollywood's storytelling secrets. What do you think? Was this one of Nicolas Cage's best movies, or did Pedro Pascal steal the whole thing and make it his own? I invite your thoughts and comments below. If you enjoyed this breakdown, check out my free guy video for a similar style of humor. You can't go wrong with a Ryan Reynolds, Jodie Comer team up. And please, take care of yourselves out there, and I'll talk to you next time.